everybody. Hi. Good evening. Welcome to Quilt Nerd. Uh, this is a show where we talk about quilts and uh, we don't make any anything. We don't make anything. <laughs> we make knowledge. Um, I'm really happy to be here and uh, I love coming to see you. And I couldn't see you on Saturday. I apologize. Uh, we have a show every Saturday night and every Tuesday night. And uh, Rob, I hear Robin, I hear Biscuit, you know, her, her loving embrace, her loving mental embrace telling me not to over explain or over apologize or, or apologize at all. But I did have to cancel the show you know, at the last minute, I mean, I I just didn't have it in me. I, I, I mean, I didn't have the juice. It was all, my, I had to cancel because I gave the uh, the American Quilt Study Group Winter Study Center seminar presentation that I had scheduled and I gave it on Saturday at three and I had to give it on Sunday at three. And I, I didn't, I miscalculated. I miscalculated just how, how much I needed to, well, anyway, it was it was great. It was also um, very, very exhausting because, because, and it's, this is about, so, so, so after I was done on Saturday, I, I mean, I got here at like five in the morning, I was working on my notes and everything. And then Saturday didn't go as well as I wanted it to. Sunday was great, went great. But, um, and so I, I just, I couldn't, it was almost as though I had gotten the flu or something. Like if I got the flu and couldn't like see straight because of my illness, you know, it would be easy to cancel the show, right? Because I'd be like, oh, I can't be on the show. I'm like, um, it was kind of like that. I was like, oh, I can't do the show. I mean, I was complete, I had no juice. It would have been bad. It would have been a bad show and he would have been like, eh, I don't know if I like this show. So I had to be, I, I just couldn't do it. I really, it was interesting how, how I couldn't. Anyway, so, but part of it, really hot, okay. Part of what I wanna tell you about that though is to thank you and to be grateful for this, this platform. Ooh. Grateful for this. I didn't do a screen test on that. I hope that's not a problem. Okay. Um, um, this platform is so great because I my presentation, you know, we had like, I thought we had like two hours for it. I mean, we, we did. There was like a two hour allotment or hour 45, something like that. And I presented my my work, my research on quilts and fine art. You know, the, the complicated presence of quilts and fine art, right? When do quilts show up in fine art museums? What does it mean? What does it mean for quilts and all that? It's the kind of thing we talk about here, you know? And I presented this material in September at the seminar in, um, in San Jose. Is that right? Is that right, Kate? San Jose, right? Is that where we are? San Diego. San Diego. San Diego. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so I did it then. And it's a lot, you know, there's a lot of material. But doing this, doing it the digital version, the, the Zoom version, I, I did not uh, appreciate quite how difficult it would be to speak into the black dot without cake, without my friend and my cohort, or my, my co-host, co-producer, pal, lifeline, you know, cake is here with us, right? And when I'm doing the show, and so I'm staring at a black dot, but I also have, you know, so, so you're gonna meet cake in a minute. And then, and then, um, and so, and so, and, but there's no chat. So there's no communication when you're on a Zoom and you're doing this webinar, this presentation. I mean, it was me in an echo chamber for about an hour and 45 minutes. It just, and that was, that was really, it was really taxing. So I say that not to be like, oh, it was so hard, but just to say like, this is a great format. It's so much fun because I know I haven't looked at the chat yet, but I will. And I can see it in my periphery. You know, there's people talking and doing stuff. It's so good. There's, there's different layers to the live streaming format and, and, and the, the chat and the interaction is, is its own layer. It's such an important layer because not only can we interact, you all interact with each other. And Kate like interacts with you and Robin, you know, and Susanna. So, so it's a good thing. It's a really good format. And I, I've been taking it for granted because I got done with that thing. And I was like, I, have you seen Overboard? You know, Overboard, it's like one of my favorite movies. And Goldie Hawn after her first day, like at the ranch, you know, doing housework that she's never done before in her life. At the end of the day, she's like on the couch and the kid's like, we don't know, dad. She just hasn't said a word in hours. She's just laying on the couch going, that's how I felt. If you know the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so good evening. Good evening to everybody. Um, Stephanie Cake, how's it going? It's going well. Stephanie Cake. 
Um, you have a pretty great quilt behind you. Can you tell about it? And I'll try to pull up the picture. Yes. Um, so I have gotten into, well, a, a friend of mine got me into uh, trolling the local auction houses. Oh. And, you know, there's incredible things to be found. Uh, Jill Alex and I have been watching a particular Civil War quilt that um, I think has far outreach uh, either of our expectations and yeah. i think it closes soon i'll, I'll have to oh. when, i'll have to update it the cake break oh. to tell you guys how much it goes for <laughs> yes i mean if you need to go um, bid you go oh no 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 oh, no okay. this is a thing i cannot afford okay what i can afford is this four dollar beauty behind me that i i said mary do you want your eyes to bleed <laughs> and i said yes i do i think i can get it right here i can pull it up right here let's see okay is that gonna do that you can do that for me okay sorry okay keep talking about it and i'll yeah, going. so I, you know, I, I had another weird auction situation at the auction house with this particular quilt, but this this was a four dollar quilt that is so ugly and heinous. It's delightful. It's really it is great. made out of polyester, Oof. Um, but not like the polyester, not double knit, not mm -hmm. the the sturdy double knit that one would make pants out of. That many quilt you many polyester quilts you see are made out of double net it's it's an interesting yes. fabric mm -hmm. no no this thing is made out of the um that fabric one might have a top made out of a shirt <laughs> and it is hard to find the repeats in this quilt they do repeat the fabrics throughout but it is so eye bleedingly you know yeah yeah there's a lot going on there's a lot yeah, going on this, this i paid four dollars plus the gas money for this trip to get this quilt and i will never ever ever let it leave my side it's really great and i took a screenshot here of uh cake on the phone because we she's on the monitor which is the phone down under the microphone so you can hear her and uh and yeah i was like i have to take a screenshot and i'm really glad the chat is covering the silly face i'm making because it's pretty tragic but i love it it looks so great and the color is way better than it is in the screenshot so <laughs> Oh Trust. yeah, yeah. The screenshot doesn't even do it justice. No. It it truly there's some blinding yellows. Yes. You know, it just nothing matches in any way, shape, or form. No. Which I think was like how the seventies went, I suppose. <laughs> I hear that's yeah. I didn't I wasn't around quite for it, but I hear tell for sure. It's really great. It's a really great one. Um, so okay, yeah, that's really great. So so cakes on the hunt and uh we've got great content tonight and I wanted to tell you that um on last, so last Saturday, we did the first half of the My First Quilt Parade. Because on the show, these ideas come up and it's like, hey, you, we should look at everybody's first quilt. You know, the first quilt you ever made. Usually we're like, you know, researching things and watching videos and looking at books. And that's what we're gonna do tonight. Very cool stuff to show you tonight. Um, but but yeah, we also have viewer, viewer interaction things. And you know, I was thinking, I saw, I was looking ahead to stuff that's coming up for subscribers and really cool events that are happening on Quilt Nerd, uh, special streams and things. And I noticed the Quilt Nerd on Parade isn't that far away. I, I, I saw it in my, full, my uh, planner. So there's audience interactive show, well, I mean, there's audience content generated shows. Uh, so we, you know, on Saturday, on a week from last week, we're gonna finish up the um, My First Quilt shows where Quilt Nerds sent in their, their first quilt. Some, some people had pictures of the first quilts they ever made. And we were talking about, I don't know, early quilts on the show. And it was like, hey, why don't we have people send in their first ever quilt? So, so it was great. It was so, it was so much fun. And so I'm saving the second half for Saturday night. Cause it kind of felt like a party. It felt fun. Just really, you know, chill and, and easy. Tonight we learn, tonight we learn. Tonight we are in school. Maybe, maybe not. Not really. It's just pretty, but it's fun. Um, and so we'll do that on Saturday night. And yeah, I was looking ahead. Robin, you might even be on this already. It's cake, you might. But I've got the next Quilt Nerd on Parade on March 28th. Is it, I mean, that's that's what's in my, you know, my thingamajig. What? Um, Carrie Dell! Carrie Dell! Carrie Dell, everybody. <laughs> Executive Director of American Quilt Study Group. I have to say, not just because she's in here because she reminded me, God, I love American Quilt Study Group. You should all be members. A lot of you are members, but AQSG is the best. Steph, you went to another study center. You came to my thing on Sunday, and then you saw 
the, the poly and ester. I, I did. Yes, yes, yes. I, you know, to, to plug, yes, to plug AQSG, <sighs> I didn't get to go to seminar last year. Um, you know, I, I know several of the nerds did go, and, and Molly got to play a big role with you. Um, but, yeah, I was really bummed I couldn't go and, and hear your, your talk and a couple of the other ones. But they released these winter study centers where we could watch them online over the weekend. And, you know, we saw them live. We got to ask questions. And it was so great. And that's a you know a great piece of what a you know American Quilt Study Group does. Oh yeah, there's so much. So, yes, programming. please join. Please join. Join I, us. Jo- join us. Um, yeah, for sure, join us. I mean, it's kind of like it's kind of hot to be part of AQSG. I mean, I, why would I play that if it wasn't kind of a sexy organization to be a part of? <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to say that anyway. But it's um, it's a good time and the programming's great. I feel like there's more programming all the time online and stuff. So it's good. It's like Quilt Nerd wouldn't exist without the American Quilt Study Group. And it was started in 1979 or 80, I ought to know, um, by a, a woman who was like, you know, why should academia have all the fun? And why shouldn't quilts be studied in a serious way? <laughs> because they are so interesting and they're, they're so... I don't know, they take you all to all the things you want to know about art and culture and even music and fashion and and history and women's studies and just everything, American history, you know? So so Sally Garut started AQSG and I don't know, for like five seconds I was like, there needs to be another study group because why should there only be one? And then I went to seminar and I was like, oh my God. Oh yeah, heritage, like legacy, sometimes that's important. So it's, a, it's an honor to be part of it. And I think you should join if you, if you, if you, you want to be part of that uh, that group you could be part of lots of groups you should be part of that one okay um so here we go so let's let's talk about this so we're gonna jump in i'm gonna show you i have not ordered books in a while but last week i did i got some new books and i know people don't necessarily like that because then you have to order more books right but all the dusty books that we get are used They they come from abe books Dot com and we're affiliates with a book so if you buy any of the books if you want any of the free books I'm going to talk about tonight they're really great then um, use the affiliate link that cake will put in the chat because then we get you know I don't know if enough people buy enough books you know it's like it pays the Wi-Fi bill or something like that well I don't know how much that is right now anyway um, but it's great it really helps support the show and I appreciate it a lot so I'm gonna we're gonna look at some quilts from books and I'm gonna show you something that I did a research trick that I did that led me to buy these books. Yeah, it was was pretty cool. I don't know why I hadn't thought about about it before. So we start each show with an intro quilt, um, and that's that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna look at the quilt behind me. What does it mean? What does it mean? What is it, who made it? Oh, it's a garment. Ha ha, how about that? How about that? We will see the full full thing after I tell you that um, there are special things coming up for Quilt Nerd. on, let me hide that real quick. Let me hide me real quick. Um, so if, when you subscribe to the show, um, there's so many benefits to doing that. You get to use special emotes in the chat. You don't have to watch ads. I don't control the ads. Twitch controls the ads on the stream. But if you subscribe to the show, you don't have to watch them, which I think is enough. I mean, I would subscribe for that reason only. I hate watching ads so much. Um, you also, I mean, you also support the work that it takes to make this show, which is a a staggering amount. It really is uh, an extraordinary amount. And I'm not the only person who works on the show. Stephanie and Susanna and Robin all help me out in ways. Sometimes I don't even think I understand all the ways that they help me out, but they really do. And uh, it's a labor of love. Let me put it that way for everyone involved, really. Um, So when you subscribe, you help make it possible. And it really means a lot. And it helps. It really helps the show exist. But uh, you also get to see special things. So on March 7th, my mom and I are going to be in Los Angeles. And we're going to stream live. Live. Um, and we have a time. We have a time. I should have put it on here. Sorry. We have a time on March 7th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. 10 a.m. Pacific time. I'll make sure that goes on the slide for next time. 10 a.m. on March 7th. Mom, Mary Ann Fons, and I will be streaming live from the Skirball Cultural Center in Los Angeles, and we're going to see a big chunk of the Fabric of a Nation exhibit. No one, no one. I mean, if you hear about somebody else doing this stuff, you go ahead and tell me. You let me know. Um, we can we can join join forces, but uh, I don't know about anybody else who's going to live stream that exhibit. 
and, but we're going to do it. So it's going to be for subscribers only because that's the kind of stuff I want to give you for subscribing to the show. You're special. It's really true. You should get perks. Um, and then, so we had this huge planning meeting the other day, me and the bakery, you know, and in April, uh, I got to talk to Jill about all this, <laughs> but at some point in April and probably, Hey Sally, thanks for coming by. Thanks for liking the stream. Um, in April, uh, at some point, Jill and, and I and, and Robin and, and everybody, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to go to New England quilt museum and hang out with Jill and Pat, Pam Weeks, and I'll take you through the New England Quilt Museum, you subscribers. Subscribe at any level. Consider Tier 2. It's a really excellent level. Um, I, I recommend it. Um, even Tier 3, but any level is great. And then in June, I'm going to be collaborating with Elizabeth Townsend Guard of Just Want a Quilt. We're going to do a very cool thing at the International Quilt Museum, and uh, we're going to broadcast from there. She'll do her podcast. I'll do my thing, and, and other stuff. And, and there's going to be something in May. I don't know what, but something fun. Um, and then when you subscribe at tier two uh, or tier three level, you get the Sunday socials. And that's where we do something different every month. There's a stream every month. We get together. You work on your projects. I read last time. I, I won't do that for a little while. That'll be kind of cycled in and out. But but um, we sew together. Do you ask me anything? I don't know. We've done a lot of different things. But it's just, it's cool. We hang out on a Sunday mid-morning. Um, and, and it's a good time. You know, it's a really good time. So, so those are perks. Okay. I have to do those things. I have to do them, and I like to do them because those are fun. It makes the show fun, right? Okay, so what is this thing? What is this thing? Look at that beautiful garment. I just think it's so pretty. It's so pretty. So this, this garment, it reminds me of those wonderful dresses that Joe Diggs made. You remember? Now, this was a Sunday social perk, that's for sure. The people who saw the dresses I'm talking about were tier two and tier three subscribers who, uh, it was a Sunday social. I was in Winterset visiting my mom, and she pulled out two dresses that Joe Diggs, uh, who since passed away, Joe Diggs made um, with this extraordinary applique. And it's interesting because we're going to see a quilt from Joe Diggs tonight. Yeah, I don't come across them that often, but in one of these new books, I came across a quilt by Joe Diggs, and it is sublime. It's so beautiful. Anyway, Mom was friends with Joe Diggs, and she had these two dresses uh, from uh, made by Ms. Diggs, and we modeled them. You know, we tried them on and wore them for the stream, and it was so cool. And this this is not made by Joe Diggs. It is made by Phyllis Verano, V A R I N. E A W. Uh, it's called Disguise with Salamanders. It's really great. Let me zoom out. Disguise with Salamanders. Um, and the book, I'll show you the cover here, but the, the author says um, setting her original applique, uh, she sets her original applique on the folkwear Turkish coat pattern. Hmm. Folkwear must be the brand, okay? Its colors blend with those of the restored adobe houses in the Presidio in Tucson. Mm -hmm. The blue door, a cooling contrast to the warmer colors. I, I agree. It's a great picture. It's a great picture. Perfectly styled. Two thumbs up. And this comes from this book. The, by the editors of Consumer Guide. Traditional or modern, over 25 full-size patterns rated for the beginner or expert. So, yeah, look at this. This is what I love. I love bargain books. I mean, that was like typed out on like a label maker, or not even. I mean, it's just, it's like typed out on a typewriter. It's just terrific. So this is, this is quite old. So, you know, the consumer guide patchwork quilts. I mean, but I, I got it. I'll tell you why I got it. Um... Why did I get this one? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I, sometimes the, the, the breadcrumb trails, I look for one book and then, then I find another one and I have to get it, you know? So, so this is another, I just took two images from this particular book because there's so many other things I want to look at with you in these other books, but this was gorgeous. And what a beautiful picture with this like uplighting. Um, this is a, a, new, a new piece of patchwork. So it's, it's called uh, Victorian Patchwork. Today's use of Victorian silk and velvet in a tiny European bolero. Tiny is right, geez. The flattering front is laced together with fine cord. It's, it's kind of, I mean, I don't want to be 
I don't want to be crass, but I mean, it's a little, I mean, it's kind of, you know, kind of saucy. It's not a Basque, you know, like those things, like I, you know, this pieces of lingerie, you know, you hear about, um, but you know, cause that's lower, but I mean, it's kind of, I don't know. You could wear that to all kinds of parties. <laughs> I don't know. What is wrong with me, Cake? I've just been like, I've just been, I don't know. I've been scamping around just being silly all day. So, I mean. Did Mary get into the giggle water? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I got into the, you know, the giggle water. That sounds creepy. <laughs> Would you like to have some of my giggle water? I made it myself. <laughs> I was thinking it was more like Willy Wonka the Chocolate Factory kind of thing, but yeah, thanks for bringing a creepy spin. I know, with like a creepy <laughs> voice. Hello. I don't know who, I don't know who that character is. Anyway, anyway, ridiculous. Uh, but I, I do think it's beautiful and the styling on this photograph, damn. She looked great with the with the light and the hair. So um, I see Sherlock, by the way, and and Carrie. You're the only person I've said hi to, but I see Babe. I see Babe and Ivy. Ivy, I think about you every day. Do you know that? I really do. If you knew my life, okay. Um, Padma High, historic clothing style. Yeah, yeah. Like it's it's sort of. I don't know. I don't know my. I don't know costume and historical dress enough to say. I was going to say, you know, medieval times. Ridiculous. It's probably like somebody looking at a at a modern style quilt and saying, "Oh yeah, they really made them. They made quilts really, really great in the 1800s, didn't they? You know, something like that." Um, and okay, okay. Hey, Quack Quack Cat. So that's so that's what that is. I'll show you the cover again if you want to purchase this. But there's other good stuff in here. There really is a lot of. Uh, there's good patterns. You know, it's old school. I forgot to tell you when it was published. Sorry. It was published in 1982. 1982. And I have to look through it again because I think the reason I got it has to do with what I'm going to show you right now. That that research trick, okay? Um, so do you remember... Do you remember... Do you remember this? I mean, of course you do. Fran Soika, right? Fran Soika. We talk about this person a fair amount. Uh, this is this is a, a a print Polynesia, the sky by Henri Matisse, 1946. Well, Fran Soika, and that's S O I K A. Fran Soika is a quilt maker who lived in Ohio, Novelty, Ohio, and she died, you know, in the 2010s. Uh, I'm pretty sure, and um, she did. We're gonna look at a bunch of her quilts because I've brought her up before. She's just kind of that like she's on like the back back burner of things I'd like to people I'd like to look into quilt makers artists I'd like to know more about. Um, she did her own version of this quilt. Yeah, I mean the, her own version of that of that painting um, of that print uh, by Henri Matisse, Polynesia the Sky. She made it in. Uh, 1981, 1981. So it's her, it's re re rendered in cloth, this, this piece by Matisse. It, it's so cool. I like it better personally than, hey, get rid of that. Um, I like it better than, than old Henri's piece. I think it's really, really neat. Um, so yeah, so that, that's Francoica and also Francoica. Oh, here's a detail. Just cool. It says Polynesia the Sky, paper cutout design by Henri Matisse, made by Fran Soika, Novelty, Ohio, 1981. Need to zoom in a little bit. Will you let me? Will you let me? Um, okay, so another Fran Soika is. I'm gonna go here. Oh, I don't want to give you that yet. Hold on, that's the big reveal. This one, this one was uh, the parakeet and the mermaid, and this this is a great quilt that's in that uh, artist in the quilt. Anyway, I won't I won't say that, <laughs> I won't say it, but it's in we've seen it before. It's in one of the books I talk about a fair amount. Um, this one is uh, Amish. It's called Monday in Middlefield, 1986. Hold on, I have to. I want to be able to zoom in, so I got to do that again. Um, modeled after or inspired by some uh, Amish. Amish clothes hanging on the clothesline in her town. 
Do that? Yeah, I can do that. Great. The Amish buggies around the around the edge, really neat, right? Hey, drink wine and so then. I like this one too. I like them all. Brand Soika is really cool. And then, so okay, so I keep finding Soikas. Soikas keep popping up, and that's what I think is so fun about about this research and about just being in this quilt world and in these books all the time. These books from the past, because you start to you start to have crushes on people. You know, like I got a little crush on Fran Soika, and um, and I just really like you know I like knowing about her. Hang on. So so I keep finding these um, these different quilts, and this one. Oh wait, hold on. This one. Um, we're gonna go back to that. Yeah, yeah. This one. This one. This one I found in the quilt engagement calendar, in, in one of them from 1979. I found this one months ago when I was flipping through the 1979 quilt engagement calendar and there it was. You see, I was like, wow, that's a great quilt. And there it was, designed and made by Fran Soika, 1979, the year of my birth, uh, Novelty, Ohio. And it's this beau, I mean, look at how good she was at making quilts, you know? I just love looking at her work. She was so talented and and I want to know more. And I've started to look when I'm when I'm supposed to be not not when I'm supposed to be doing other things. When I'm when I'm researching something on newspapers.com, usually I will just pop Fran Soika into the search bar and um, and just see if I can come up with something that I didn't see before. And that's kind of it's what's interesting about this um, uh, the books that I get, you know, and the books that I find. Like I'll show you the trick uh, that I use to find the books that I got tonight. And it's weird because if you search, you know, quilt history or quilt, you know, studies or something in a search engine, any search engine where you might ostensibly find something, you know, one day you'll find some stuff and then the another day you'll search, your search will be slightly different and you'll find other things. And that's maybe because the inventory is changing, but also just because people, you know, SEO and, and tags and descriptions of things are not always, you know, the, the algorithm isn't always going to catch that stuff or the search engine isn't always going to respond to the, the data that's been entered about a given book or a given uh, title. And Steph, you could probably talk more about that, right? I mean, I don't know. I just feel like, <laughs> I just feel like you're smarter than me, you know, like in many ways. So it's like, but, but that's true, right? Because like I, on eight books, I found three books that I've never seen before last week. And I'm all over eight books like crazy. So is that why? Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't, I'm, I make it up as I go. Okay. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> I frequently just type random things into any kind of search field. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's, and that makes sense, right? That some people would put quilt history in the, in the metadata for a quilt and, or a book and some people wouldn't, right? Okay. So here we have, I have three new Soikas. Three. Three. And here is the first. Do you recognize this motif? I think you probably do. That's the bird. That's the bird from the Matisse quilt. Yes! Jage Kazan, you got it! You got it! And, mm, oh, and champagne. Mm. Look at that! Look at that quilt. Okay, let me let me zoom out so you can see the whole thing again. Hang on now. Come here. Come here. Come here, buddy. Okay. Birds of a feather. Birds of a feather designed applicate. Hey, sorry, my computer is a little bit tired today. It's okay. Um, Birds of a feather designed applicate and quilted by Fran Soika. Hang on. Come here. I'll zoom in again. It's it's it it's. I mean, this is a quilt that is the sister, or the brother of Polynesia the Sky. And by the way, Polynesia the Sky, I wish it would stop being like that. Um, Polynesia the Sky is at the American Folk Art Museum. Uh, at, at least it's in the American Folk Art Museum book of quilts, which is very exciting. Um, I'm gonna close a couple of these. That might actually help a little bit. Yeah. Um, Nope, I don't want to save that. Okay, mm hmm sorry. Uh, yeah, I think I think when I open too many things on Acorn, it doesn't like it. All right, sorry, thank you. Yeah, see, it's working better. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're the same birds. And it doesn't say what year 
this was made. But um, it's got to be, I mean, the other was made in 1981 or 82. It's got to be right around that time. Hey, Shauna Sos, thank you so much for subscribing. You've been subscribed for six months. You're on a four month streak. I really appreciate you and thank you for your support. Um, so that was pretty neat. It's like finding these little, finding these little, you know, these little treats. It's so much fun. And Myra, thank you so much for subscribing. You've been subscribed for, at tier two for 17 months. You're one of my first subscribers of all time. Did you know that, Myra? You pro I, I probably say it all the time. She made two, Mademoiselle Larry. What is the background, asks Ivy. I have questions also. I mean, so the- I too. Yes, so, the, so the, the, the quilting is the same. It's this echo quilting around the bird, right? It's, it, and it looks sort of like, not wormy. I mean, I don't wanna say wormy, but, um, but uh, let's see. Oh, I know why, why my thing is doing that. Um, so it, so it's this echo quilting around the the bird, but I think I think so it looks transparent, right? Like it looks like this weird transparency. But what I think is going on is that it's a it's a it's a print that came in two colorways. That's what I think. does that does that sound right? Hey Deborah, that that it's it's a turquoise version and a purple version of the same print. It seems to me, and and because of that you have this. Uh, yeah, you have this pattern in the fabric, and then her quilting on top of it has sort of made it look like it's water or something. I don't know. What do you think? What's your theory? I, I, yeah, I mean, I yeah, I mean, I think that's a good theory. I, I also kind of wonder because the and this just could be the resolution on my screen. Yeah, but the but the edges of that one color that I guess that kind of reddish color look, look like a little blurry. So I'm kind of wondering if maybe it was just a single print that was painted with like dye oh, or yeah you know what i mean like, it is a low red the, the photo was not great unfortunately it is it is it, and mm -hmm. it's it's too bad because most of the photos in the book are pretty good but yeah it is it is a bit grainy it's true and you can see look the sun the sun the sun was high or hot because you can you can see like the 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 shadow here hey sherry thanks for for tuning in um and so yeah so i'm not sure what what theories do other people have what do you what do you think um, somebody said the birds look stuffed. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, it's showing motion indeed. Like it's framing it. Yes, wonky. Exactly. Like air. Yeah, the movement. It's so great. It's so great. So that was a fun discovery to see this, uh, this soika, the stealth soika. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Oh, it's so cool. It's such a great quilt. Those birds, those birds are so beautiful. And they're Matisse. I mean, they really are Matissean, you know, and she's paying homage to this. Okay, here's another one. Here's another one I found. Oh boy. Now this also is a not a great photograph. It's grainy. In, in fact, in fact, this one, this is blurry. This one's actually a blurred photograph. And this is also not my favorite Francoica, I have to say. It's called uh, Images of Spain. Um, I mean, it's great, it's amazing, but, but I, I like other quilts of hers more. But of course, I was so happy to f see this anyway, to find this one anyway. Um, it doesn't, they, they didn't have, like I said, there wasn't a year on that last one, that uh, Birds of a Feather quilt. Um, and there's not a year on this one either. Is that right? No, no, 1993. Yeah, yeah, 1993. It's interesting. It looks, it looks like an earlier quilt to me for her, but anyway. Maybe I like her because she's so pictorial, you know? She has, she has uh, such, she always makes pictorial quilts. I don't know that I've seen, well, I guess that holly, that Christmas holly quilt is is just, you know, pattern, right? See, and now actually, you know, I, I like I, this. I kind of see a lot yeah. of variability in her style. Yeah, there, you know, because okay. I, mm -hmm. I know I've seen, so this one is new to me, mm -hmm. but I, you know, some of the other ones, I, like, I've seen the holly one before, and I think, you know, I always, I'm always surprised when you say, oh, that's Francoica. Yeah, you're right, actually, because, yeah. Yeah. Because this looks nothing and like the, the Matisse. Yeah, sorry, go on. Sorry. The Matisse yeah. bird one always sticks in my mind right. because I feel like that's the very first one I ever saw that you said that's Francoica. Yeah. But then all these other ones, I'm like, this, yeah, it's just a different, it's like very illustrator kind of, mm -hmm. you know, gra graphic design-ish. Mm -hmm. And then like that, uh, that Holly one looks so experimental. Like, you know, she was maybe ripping on some Hawaiian type of quilting. Mm-hmm. You know? mm -hmm. That's an interesting, that's very interesting. Okay, hold on. 
yeah, Hawaiian. That's such a great, such a great observation, Cake, that it is. It is like the, it is like that. It does look like that. And then, and by the way, this like pillow space up here, or like consider how this would look on the bed, how beautiful it would be. I mean, uh, not so beautiful. It really, it really is. It really is. 1979. What a little badass. She's such a badass. Um, okay, yeah, but that's a really, really good comment. Like, it, she is versatile. She's not all pictorial. In fact, one, the other Soika that I found is not pictorial at all. Well, okay, well, I didn't look at it too closely because I like to look at things with you on the show. Uh, illustrative, that's the word. Yes, illustrative. Hey, Miss Shrawl. Hey, Jan. Um, hot air on a highway. Oh, I like that. The plaid. The plaid. Oh, 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 I know what you're talking about. Okay. All right, so that's so that's images of Spain. And then there's one other one. Oh, how about that? I think I've seen like a black and white image of this. Let me leave it for you to see full on for a second. I know it's, you know. It's got a lot of detail, so we'll get right up in there. Oh, I just realized something. I think, well, this reminds me of Bertha Mexroth. You know, like it, 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 because this really tight grid quilting and these like, it looks a little Art Deco to me, or maybe not Art Deco, Art Nouveau, I don't know. I don't know by now, but but these these black shapes, like what is that motif? It's so unusual. But then there's kind of this Dutch kind of like, not fracture really, but Scandinavian. There's kind of a Scandinavian look to it, isn't there? It's gorgeous, isn't it, Lynn? Mm. I love yeah. this. I do too. Oh, this, I, and I wouldn't have guessed that this was her. No, yeah, me neither. Me neither. I mean, it's, and it's like not symmetrical. A, a, a coma quilt, a coma. So let me, and this, this is from, another book it was this other and that's and the, and the next book is the one we're really going to look at and it's not all Francoica but um it's uh it's really good so a coma quill this page 92 okay here's what we here's what we have about it um oh interesting okay quilted by Francoica designed by Drew Lewis Designed by Drew Lewis um, from Acoma Pueblo, New Mexico. Now she did a lot of, she's done a lot of things, a lot of things that have um, uh, Southwestern sort of origin, you know, Pueblo, lots of uh, American Indian kind of things. And so I don't know if that was her heritage. I don't know enough about her to be able to say, but there's a lot of that in her work. Uh, where she's drawing on those traditional American uh, themes and, and designers and things. So she did a lot of quilting for other people, including Ed, Ed well, uh, Larson. Well, then, then that yeah. begs the question. I mean, and usually you hear it the other way around. Like Ber Bertha made her quilt tops, but somebody else often quilted them. Am I right? That's what I hear. I haven't confirmed Yeah, and anything. so in this case, we have Fran quilting somebody else's design. But my mm -hmm. question is, did they design it? And then did she do the applique or did they give her a quilt top? What inquiry we, minds want to know well, I, know I know me too and we may find out because this is the one quilt that i have some information about so 1988 it's 105 by 73 inches it's hard because like i want to give you all the detail shots but then I, the, the full effect is so good you know I'll, I'll try to do my best okay here's what the book says and we'll look at which book this is in just a second the acoma quilt represents a collaboration with drew lewis a potter a potter from Acoma Pueblo in New Mexico. Drew is from a family of fine potters and travels throughout the country to exhibit his work and teach. The collaboration grew out of a friendship and admiration of each other's skills. Drew's quilt designs depict, design depicts traditional motifs found on Acoma pottery for centuries. O-M-G. Oh my God, it's so great. Acoma pottery. Oh, and it's so funny. We were like, is it Art Nouveau? Is it like, it's a little like Bertha Mextra? You know, it's Acoma pottery. Amazing. I have lived in the Midwest all my life. Wendy Lavitt is saying this. We'll look at that in just a second. She says, I have lived in the Midwest. Wait, who is saying that? No, this is Francoica. That's very strange. There's no quote on it, though. Weird. 
it is credited to Francoica, but this is an odd edit. So I have lived in the Midwest all of my life, says Francoica. New Mexico and its people have introduced me to a different way of life. Visually, the mountains and the mesas and the desert colors have influenced my work. Spiritually, I have been profoundly affected by the family-oriented values of the Native Americans and their sincerity and gentleness. The Acoma quilt resides at the Acoma Pueblo, while a number of hand-coiled pots made from Acoma and Chaco Canyon clay by Drew Lewis are proudly displayed in my home. These works are testament to the quotidian. Uh, these works are testaments to the quotidian above the entrance to the Museum of International Folk Art in Santa Fe. I want to go there so bad. Okay. The art of the craftsman is a bond between the peoples of the world. So she's saying these works from Drew and myself are testaments to the quotation that is above the entrance to the Museum of International Folk Art in Santa Fe, which reads, quote, the art of the craftsman is a bond between the peoples of the world. I love that. I love that so much. I love that so much. I'm like whipping out like five different books stuff. Sorry. <laughs> this, this one. I haven't even shown the cover of this one yet. I'm getting so excited. That is beautiful. And I would like to go to Santa Fe. Who, who out there is? Are any of the nerds Santa, Santa Fean? Are any of you in Santa Fe? Because I have a new friend in Santa Fe now. Bertha Mextroth's kin is in Santa Fe. And she said I could come visit any time. And she said you got to go to the Museum of, of Folk Art. Okay. So we've got these new, these new soikas. How did I find them? How, Mary, did you find them? Well, I'm going to show you. I did something I'd never done before. Now I've got to pull up my browser here. Um, and I, I want to show you because it's... Uh, something you could really use too. Uh, and I haven't used it to the full extent of its power, I'm sure, not yet. Uh, and we're gonna show some more. Look at this, look at this Stephanie cake. <laughs> you look great, I love it, I love it. Um, hey, Elizabeth, hi! I was just talking about you, talking about how in mm, June we're gonna play, we're gonna do some stuff. Okay, so uh, I used archive.org right? Use this thing. And we've used it before. We've, we've talked about it before. This, uh, it's a pretty, pretty neat thing. It's not much to look at, but this is the, the group or the, the people who make this, the Internet Archive. They do the Wayback Machine where they like take pictures of all of the Internet all the time. So like my blog from 2006, I can, I can go back and I can find those pages, even though the links are you know, broken if you searched for my blog and blog posts in 2006, they don't have, but if, but you can search the Wayback Machine for that. But what you, what I'm going to show you here is what I used um, to find those books. And here is what I did. So I have a login. It's free. It's free to use. There's lots and lots of books. So, so I'm clicking on, I'm clicking on, you see, I'm waving my little mouse up here. I can't zoom in on a browser window, but there's this book, okay? This little second icon that I'm flicking over right here is a little yellow book, and I click it. Um, and I go over to this um, search box here, and uh, I can search metadata, which is what you usually search. If I'm searching for a title of a book, I will enter the title. Uh, in fact, sonnets from the Portuguese. Sonnets from the Portuguese is the book by Elizabeth Barrett Browning that Bertha Mextroth translated for Helen Keller in like the 19, early 1900s. So, so the Internet Archive, or the, sorry, the Internet uh, Text Archive, look at all of these, oh, I can zoom in, great, all of these copies of Sonnets from the Portuguese that have been scanned in by libraries or people, people can do it too, you have to, I mean, Elizabeth's on the stream, that's really great because there's copyright stuff and there's, you know, the, the, they'll have a guide uh, if you poke around on this site um, to tell you, you know, what books could be uploaded or, or whatnot, but I mean, a lot of these are deaccession books from libraries, colleges and things, and so they scan them and they put them, they put them up here, and we looked, look, I'm, I'm turning the pages of the actual book that's been scanned. Sonnets from the Portuguese and other love poems, right? And, and it's so cool, and you can zoom in really close like that, and you can see like, 
here. And you can you can go like this, you can click. It's very easy to use. See, so I just clicked on a little view that shows me all of the pages. So I, if I'm like, oh, I wanna find the illustrations in this book, so I can sort of see at a glance, you know, this page. You can look at it in a single page like this. You can look at it with two pages. You can go full screen. You can, I mean, you can really, it's really great. So if you if you have some, you know, sight, sight problems that, that um, you know, where you need bigger print, <laughs> nothing could be better than this. And I know Kindle can do these things, but I really, really like, I really, really like this tool and I use it all the time, okay? So you can check out a book for an hour or you can check it out for 14 days. Some of the, just poke around. And, and what I do, see what I do, so I have this account and I have favorites and look how many favorites I have. I have so many, I have so many. I have patchwork quilts, I have, well, I have Waiting for Godot, okay, okay, fine, History of Mistresses. I was getting interested in, oh yeah, Dandy in the Underworld, you know, like all kinds of fun things, but uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, okay, so the quilts come later, okay, the quilts come later. That was for my research, okay, it's fine. Someone was like, you know, don't share your search history, you know, on a live stream, but it's fine. Murder at the Quilt Show, look at this, isn't that great? Isn't that great? Murder at the Quilt Show. That's an actual book. Um, they have some videos and things. I've played a couple of videos uh, for you from from this um, from this site. Look, my mom's book, Classic Quilted Vests. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so some of the books that I talk about on the show are available on this site, and I I think I mentioned that. I have mentioned it on uh, the Patchwork and Prose stuff I do for Quilt Folk. I often say, you know, the books I talk about you can find here. Um, so, so this is really fun. This is really cool. So what I did to find the books that I showed you today, I did something different. I did a different kind of search. Hang on. Um, let me see. Get out of that. Okay. What I did was I went to do a search instead of for... Instead of metadata, okay, let me go here. Yeah, okay, great. Instead of the metadata, where, you know, sonnets from the Portuguese, that would be like the title, okay? Instead, I put text contains, because this thing will search the whole book's contents. I mean, I don't understand how this works, right? I don't understand. But, um, but what I did was I put Fran Soika in there. Not because I know there's no books about Francoica yet. <laughs> there ought to be one. Um, if you want to write one, please go ahead. I, all the things I want to do, I don't have time to do. So if somebody really wants to do it, as long as it's not Bertha Mextroth or William Dutton, because I'll fight for Cake's <laughs> ability to do that. I mean, I, yeah. Um, but if you have a research, uh, a yearning to do something, anyway, just come talk to me. We should make it happen. Okay, so I looked for Fran Soika because I know there's no book. Look, it comes up. I know there's no book about her, but the text of a book might contain her. I know that it does. So I hit enter. And what happened? Well, hmm. a lot of weird stuff. <laughs> a lot of weird stuff. I know that she, so here you have like, look at these, these are years when her name would have appeared, did appear. Um, in books, not gonna be 1939, probably, you know, and some of, sometimes it's not accurate, of course not. But, you know, look, in 1989, okay, 19, look, we know some of her quilts were made in 19, in the 1970s, we just saw some of them, certainly 1980, look, there's a lot of, a lot of action, right, up here. So, oh, well, yeah, see, yeah, Giordani Soika, that's not gonna, this, this hit over here, uh, not gonna be anything. But this, I'd never seen this quilt before. Treasury of applique patterns. Wallpaper may inspire a new design. Fran Soika, so she's in it. Her name is in this book. Treasury of applique designs by Maggie Malone. And this was the book in which Birds of a Feather appeared. That's that's where it, that's where it is. That's how I got. That's how I found it. That's cool, right? Isn't that neat? So, so yeah, I know I know about this quilts of the Ohio Western Reserve. We've looked at this quilt. We looked at it tonight, and that's the cover of a book that we have. We've talked about on the show. Um, some of this stuff is, you know, yeah, the the metadata doesn't uh, know what it's doing. Oh, guiding stars. You see this? This was a book in one of the 
New Year's Eve giveaways, by the way, I still have one to send. Actually, yeah, but somebody got this one <laughs> or is gonna get this one. I know that sounds terrible, but I didn't have their address till recently. Anyway, but this, this book was a sampler of Quilter's favorite quotations. That was in one of the giveaway things. I didn't know Fransoika. I didn't know that, that that she had a quote in there. You know what we should do? Let's look. Let's see what let's see what she what she said. It's an interesting book because it's not quoting quilters. It's it's quilters that submitted their favorite quotes or something from other people. So look look. Oh, maybe it is her. It's a confusing book. I I don't know. So it looks like it looks like it is Fran. Look, Fran said this. It is important. Whoop. Hang on now. Cool it. Cool it. What's going on? Hey, hey, rip, rip, rip. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Here's what Fran says. It, it is important to have confidence in your own ideas. Once you are happy with your own work, you can appreciate rather than envy that of others. Huh. She's in here six times. Where, oh, here she is. Oh, this is great. Oh, I, I read this one. Hold on, hold on. At 50, I decided to do more of what I wanted to do stopped sorry sorry it's hard to do this on the thing stopped doing many many things I didn't want to do and gave up worrying about those things I had no control over okay mm -hmm. oh and here's a here's a here's a bio of her Fransoika, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, great. Oh yeah, look at this, oh, this is great. Fransoika, a native of Ohio, was born January 17th, 1924 in Cleveland and lives in novelty. She made her first quilt in 1956, but it was not until 1968 that quilting became, after the needs of her family, top priority. Her work has been exhibited widely, mm, wi widely, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, quilt engagement calendar, right? So, so this is great because I think, I mean, I don't know that I've, written it down there's no index for the quilt engagement calendar you know so I mean look this is ugh, it's really tough to like do anything else but just follow these breadcrumbs all day I mean it's like oh I'm like oh yeah great quilt engagement calendar Fransoik is in 82 83 85 86 of course the engagement calendar kept going but anyway it's good times okay so that's what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you that this uh, tool can be used in a way that I hadn't, I previously had not used it, which is to, to search inside the actual, the actual text, okay? And, and this brings us to this, and then I'm gonna take a break, Cake's gonna take over, and then when we come back, I'm gonna show you amazing quilts, extraordinary quilts that you just can't believe from this book, which is, Hang on, let me get to the cover. And yes, we have a affiliate link for it. And you might say, well, why would I buy the book if I can look at it like this? Trust me, it's better. It's way better to have the book and um, it's not that expensive. I mean, you know, it's used and, but but but, but if you don't have the money, that's, that's no problem. See, you can find a lot of these books on, on archive. Um, Contemporary Pictorial Quilts, Wendy Lavitt. And Fran, Fran's in here. She's in here a couple times, including including right there a coma quilt there it is right there and that's and and so and the reason to get the book right is because I this is not a great photo of this on the computer but I have the book I went and scanned it at super high DPI and we were able to enjoy the image you know what I'm saying so kind of neat right hey Amy I'm so happy that you're here um, <laughs> Amy I have not actually read Murder at the Quilt Show. B Biscuit has. Biscuit has. Oh my! Really? <laughs> what? Did, what? Did you, I have it. I have it. I think. I think I have it. And you, do you know Jimmy Kimmel? I'm gonna pull up the clip. Jimmy Kimmel talked about it on his show. Um, Amy, have you? Oh wait, hold on. Oh God, I got so excited. Amy, by the way, welcome to the Quilt Nerd Chat. And people, if you uh, could send a welcome basket to Amy, that would be awesome. Um, we love it when people say hi in the chat that's so cool so i'm glad you're watching quilt nerd um those welcome baskets are for you so robin how was okay how <laughs> how was it how was it oh thanks babe i mean robin says okay you have to remember when it was written it's kind of campy yeah it seems a little campy hey hope 
Um, yeah, it seems a little campy to me, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, so um, now that you've all seen all the research I'm doing about all the other things I'm reading about when I'm not reading about quilts, it's very exposing, all my books that are in my favorites. Anyway, it's my <laughs> nothing really scandalous. Okay, um, so I'm going to turn it over to Cake, and I'm gonna take a quick break, and when I come back, I just have, I couldn't put that book down. I couldn't put it down, this contemporary pictorial quilts. I've just got a bunch of them. We won't get through them all, but there's a Joe Diggs quilt in there. There is, there, there's a Michael Cummings I've never seen before. I mean, look at all the tabs. I love, I love a tab. Oh, sorry, a little ASMR. Okay, all right, Cake, you ready? You ready for the cake break? Okay, I'll be right back. Let me put this on. I love the idea of all the little tags being your little your little uh, page tabs being like ASMR. I have many page tabs myself. I love a tab. Oh yes, oh yes, we have Dutton Smut tonight. Dun Dutton Smut. I need to make a video of Dr. Dutton. You know, we say that tongue in cheek because frankly, Dr. Dutton is probably the squeakiest clean person. Yeah, probably. In all of the world ever. Probably. <laughs> okay, I'll be back. Thanks. So, first of all, I wanted to mention that there is the opportunity for a impromptu nerd meetup in April at uh, the Mid-Atlantic Antique Show. Uh, those dates are April 29th and 30th. So anybody that's in the Mid-Atlantic, that would be available to go to that. Uh, our very own nerd, Jill Alex, will be there. Um, she is a, uh, uh, a quilt dealer, so she will be vending there. And... Yours truly will be there helping and will be bringing some sewing machines that I have been tinkering with. So, yes, Poolsville, Maryland. Um, yeah, Mother Nature, it's uh, it's in Montgomery County. So <clears throat> it's sure to be interesting. It's out on a it's out on a farm. It looks it looks fun. So um, I think I've heard of it. it. I mean, they do it every year. Obviously, it's kind of far from where I live. It's about an hour away. So anyway, those of you that um, are available, please come by or, you know, let me know. We can probably coordinate a time for, you know, for folks to be there and see each other. So now on to Dunton. So first of all, I, I can't remember if I mentioned that I made a Dunton Club um, channel on the disco. So um if anyone is interested in dropping in there and reading any of the items that I've, I've put out on a Google Drive um, to share, for sure, feel free to read some of that stuff. I've, I have my next stop is digging into his textbooks. Um, but for those of you that just love to, you know, dig into um, <laughs> snore worthy information, feel free to get in there. Um, so with that said, I wanted to read another article and it's, this is going to be a short one. Um, you know, I think I mentioned last on my last Dunton update that uh, I'm waiting on access to for his papers. Um, I don't know if, if you guys knew this, but um, the Baltimore Museum of Art has all of Dunton's quilt related um, research, all his papers, his correspondence, all that stuff. Uh, so I've been waiting to get my my uh, sticky little fingers on some some Dunton stuff. But in the meantime, I've been doing some of his genealogy. Um, and I just started like kind of like, uh, you know, like Mary was just talking about kind of using some creative things. And, you know, I've gone to newspapers.com and just been like, tell me everything about Dr. Dunton. Well, Dr. Dutton was a busy man. <laughs> and I, I, I gotta be honest, I have no idea how this man did all of the things that he did in his lifetime. He did live to be 98. Um, so I guess that's the key to, to being so um, prolific is you just have to live forever. <laughs> but, <laughs> so this little gem is from, this is the Baltimore Sun, December 9th, 1949. And the article is called Wedgwood Expert Returning to Appraise Collections. And half of the article involves <laughs> Dunn. So, because Baltimore is stuffed with so much unusual pottery, Miss Annie Reese, Wedgwood Expert, will return Tuesday to the Museum of Art, which I think this is the Baltimore Museum of Art, as we know today, to examine more items from private collections. On November 22nd, her offer to appraise such things, telling Wedgwood collectors the age, use, and ins insurance value of their prized pieces resulted in a day-long 
procession to the museum. Items submitted ranged from buttons to teapots to oversized vases, in some instances filled clothes baskets. Two items in particular stirred her fancy. A set of 18th century porcelain weights signed was given to her by Dr. William Rush Dutton Jr. of Catonsville for presentation to the Wedgwood Museum of Etruria, England. <laughs> I mean, Dutton. <laughs> Supposedly, the museum contains an example of everything the firm has ever made. Now, we're talking Wedgwood here. Wedgwood. But Miss Reese said D Dr. Dutton's weights were a complete surprise. And then it goes on to talk, you know, a little bit more about, like, kind of what happens after that, which doesn't involve Dr. Dutton. But can you believe this? I mean, That's come cool. on, Dutton. <laughs> He's got a million-year-old Valentine that he found in the family Bible. He's got something Wedgwood made that Wedgwood didn't, didn't even remember they had. He, he was a, so, yeah, yeah. He was a man about he, town. He was a, he was a. He really a, was. Yeah. He really was. And, you know, I was thinking to myself, you know, I, I don't know much about Wedgwood China. I'm, I don't know if there's any nerds maybe into collecting or, or might know about Wedgwood China. But Probably. from what I know, it's pricey. It's very fine stuff. And I, my guess is because he was. You know, he, he kind of came down through the elite of Philadelphia. His, From what I've gathered, his mother was like a society lady. Um, and he, I know he's, he's named after his uncle, who was also a physician. And I'm drawing a complete blank on what his father did. But, the, you know, he, he was not hurting as a child. He had, I think, a pretty, um, you know, upper crusty childhood. So mm -hmm. I'm guessing that this Wedgwood, these Wedgwood weights came down through, I would guess, his mother's family. I, I don't know. But, um I mean, gosh, Dutton. <laughs> he, he's an inspiration. He's an inspiration. He was, did he speak lots of languages? Was he a polyglot? I haven't found evidence of that. I have, he had some very interesting thoughts on things. And I haven't exactly figured out, like, I mean, it, he doesn't seem to have a political leaning on things. He seems to have this, like, um, like for the greater good, um, you know, being yeah. good to people, yeah. don't letting people, not let people be harmed. It's a very doctorly, I guess, kind of attitude about, you know, do you no harm? Yep, yep, um, yep. Yeah, right, right, so, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Good old Dutton. He's great. He's great. And you know what? I was just thinking, you know, I'm always like, I'm, a, I'm not a, I'm a terrible manager, but I'm a great cheerleader. And I'm like right there to cheer you on to do things. And I mean it do like a research project or just start like poking around newspapers.com, you know, or like looking at the internet archive for, for stuff you want to look at. And also, and, and if you, you could do a research thing or write an article, you can make a YouTube video because there ought to be a YouTube video about Dr. Dutton. There ought to be, there ought to be one yeah, on all these there, things. There should be. I'm working on it. I mean, for my, for my part, I'm really am working on it, but, um, but yeah, you should, you should, you could make one too. You're, you're, you're well, and against. I also, to continue plugging the American Quilt Study Group, there are uh, the seminar uh, study centers are, oh, they're accepting right. applications or proposals for that. So, that's true. Um, yeah. So for anybody that has some research under their belt that would like to present, yep. it's an awesome opportunity. It really is. It really is. Um, I do think you have to be a member. That would make sense, right? But um, but you don't have to right, be a member right. to yes. check it out on, on the website, though. But, you don't, yeah, you can just read about it. Okay, check this out. Um, we're going to watch the little Murder at the Quilt show was on the Jimmy Fallon show. He talked about it. He talked about it on a segment called Do Not Read. Thanks a lot, Jimmy. Um, I maybe saw it a long time ago, but we're going to watch it. Hang on. Um, oh, I got to go to this. That would help. Here we go. Oh, hello. Well, yes, Jimmy. <laughs> um, here. Okay. Let's see what he has to say about Murder at the Quilt show. I'll probably be fined $1,000 for for doing this. In fact, actually, you know what? I will get like a copyright, not a strike, but I'll get a copyright claim. It'll be super lame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it small just because it's less of a problem. Maybe. I don't know. Everything's terrible. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'll just clip this out of the video. <laughs> I don't care. Okay. Let's hear, let's hear him talk about Murder at the Quilt Show, the book that Robin loves more than anything. <laughs> Come here. Okay. A read list. The first one's a mystery book. Ooh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Book, yeah. Sorry. Uh, this one's called. This is the do not read list. All right. Let's see what's on my do not read list. Yeah. The first one's a mystery book. Ooh. I do love a mystery book. Yeah. Uh, this one's called Murder at the Quilt Show. <laughs> yeah. And so you know what? you're in for a ride because oh. it's from the best selling author of 12 Golden Threads and Scrap Quilt Memories. <laughs> 
Yeah, check out the tagline in the back. Come for the quilting, stay for the murder. <laughs> murder. Yes. That's You're really great. Murder. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, either way, well, they're innocent until proven guilty. Yay! <laughs> Woo! Next up, next up, we. Have... That was good. <laughs> uh, next up, we have a cookbook. Ooh. <laughs> that was it. Books, that was pretty good. Innocent till proven quilty. I mean, that was a good one. That was a good one. It was cute, right? I mean, and now that lady, that lady can say she was featured on the Jimmy Kimmel show, or the Jimmy Fallon show, right? I mean, she was. He made fun of her, but she was featured. He made fun of her, and all press is good press, right? No such thing as bad but press. Didn't Robin just say that's where she found out about it? So the lady got oh. a book sale. Oh, did she really? See, that's great. That is great. Um... You're excited to read it now, Amy. I think, hold on, I think I've got a copy. Let me just see. I swear I do. I swear that I do. I mean, I did. I don't know. It's somewhere. It's somewhere. I don't know. I'm running out of space. <laughs> I'm running out of space. But anyway, so um, she got a lot of book sales. Oh, yeah, good. You told a zillion people about it. I love that, Robin. Good, 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 good. Um, okay, so so let's take a look at some really amazing quilts. That's what we do here, right? We have the opportunity to do that. Um, there are so many in this wonderful book, Contemporary Pictorial Quilts uh, by Wendy Lavitt, um, that we, I mean, we can't get through them all because I, you know, but we've got time. We usually go about two hours on this show and I really, really missed being with you. I mean, I, I gotta get my quilt nerd fill, you know, each week. Hopefully, just like you do, you know. So, um, so I'm gonna, but I'm gonna. I picked some favorites, and uh, gosh, well, I mean, let's look at this one. I always think when I think about Nora Izell, I think about Robin. I think about Biscuit and uh, Robin's Nest Creations, who's there in the chat. Um, she uh, she is our lady of subscriptions. She helps manage subscriptions and the subscriber streams and stuff. She's really, really helpful and great. And I just remember you really liking the Nora Azell civil rights quilt. Was it the civil rights quilt? I showed one and you, I just remember you being like, that's the quilt, like you zapped, it zapped you. And so I'll show this one first because this is a Nora Azell quilt right here. So this is contemporary pictorial quilts. And actually, let me tell you what the back says. It says, <clears throat> in contemporary pictorial quilts, which was published in 1993, thread and cloth join brush and canvas as recognized tools of the art world. Yay. The quilt makers, most but not all of them women, seek to satisfy their own creativity without sacrificing communication. They strive to translate personal experiences into universally affecting images. Wendy Lavitt, renowned author of American Folk Dolls, Labors of Love, I knew I recognized her name, and Animals in American Folk Art, awesome, has selected 113 contemporary quilts for this volume. Each is rep reproduced in full color and accompanied by the, an artist statement. That's why it's such a great book. I love it when they do that. It's so good. Organized into 14 thematic categories, these dazzling quilts are a are testament to the wide-ranging interests of today's pictorial quilters. They will inspire quilters and dreamers alike. Topics include inner feelings. <laughs> inner feelings, oh God. Topics include inner feelings, I love it. The urban environment, spiritual, spirituality and religion, political statements, women's concerns, the African-American and Native American experiences, uh, and more, and, and more uh, with traditional focuses on holidays, animals, and childhood. I mean, hell yeah. It's by Gibbs Smith Publisher in Salt Lake City. I don't know how many times I've searched for pictorial quilts in a books. This never came up. But you just, it's a big world out there. Okay, here we go. Nora Azell. Yeah. This is great. So the, here I'll read... Uh, I'll read what's down here. So this is the Jones Valley quilt uh, by Nora Ezell, E-Z-E-L-L, -L, uh, from Greene County, Alabama. It was made in 1987, 94 by 71 inches, uh, courtesy of the Robert Cargo Folk Art Gallery in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. We're going to come back to the Cargos in just a minute. Fascinating thing, discovery in this book regarding them. Okay, here's what the book has to say. Um, 
74-year-old Nora Ezell was born and grew up in Birmingham, Alabama, known in the early days as Jones Valley. Wow, I didn't know that. This quilt is a memory piece that preserves Ezell's recollections of her early years there. In an exhibition in Birmingham Public Library in 1990, the quilt was reviewed by art critic James Nelson, who wrote in the Birmingham News, quote, in the Jones Valley quilt, Ms. Ezell recalls her Fairfield, a Birmingham suburb, her Fairfield past with home, church, and school, nestled in a picture-pretty site framed by various abstract designs. <laughs> okay, okay, that's interesting. Uh, unquote, sorry. In the same review, Ezell is quoted as follows concerning her work. Quote, I like my ideas. I do whatever comes from the top of my head, crazy or creative. You be the judge. Unquote. In 1989, two quilts made by Nora Ezell were included in the exhibition Stitching Memories, African-American Story Quilts. We have looked at that book on the show. Uh, in Williamstown, Massachusetts at Williams College. In 1990, as the recipient of the Alabama Folk Heritage Award, Ezell was described as, quote, a quilt maker of extraordinary talent and commitment, as well as an articulate spokeswoman for an art that is deeply rooted in Alabama culture. Her quilts are just... They're just, they're like pure good. <laughs> I don't know. They just always make me feel like, like any great work of art, they just feel like they had to exist. Like that she basically just, like, like any, when you see Prince performing, you know, any video of Prince performing, I remember thinking when I saw him doing Purple Rain, like on a video, you know, in the rain, this video of him. And I was like, well, this is an example of a person who's doing exactly what they were supposed to do with their life. Like he was, he's, Prince did exactly what he was supposed to do. He was like a wild animal. You know, a fox is just a fox. It like, it can only fox. You know, a fox is around and, it, you know, a dog's a dog. It's like Prince was Prince and it was so great. And I just feel like Nora Ezell's quilts, it's like, oh, well, yeah. Like she, she just had to make them and there they are. I, I don't know. That might make sense to, to you. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully. You can relate, babe, thank goodness. Um, good, 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 good. Isn't loading, oh no, okay. Um, so there's, there's Nora Ezell. So, so here, this is really crazy. This quilt, speaking of Robert Cargo, so this, the last quilt was the Robert Cargo Folk Art Gallery is where the Nora Ezell quilt came from. Let me shut the door, hang on one second. This quilt was quilted by Robert Cargo. And I had heard before that he learned how to quilt. So this person and his wife, Robert and Helen Cargo, were major quilt collectors. Most, well, and not just quilt collectors, but collectors of um, vernacular art in their, I mean, artists down in the South from Alabama, Thornton Dial, and I mean, just I've seen some of their collection like in, a home in a home where the, you know their family home some of that some of that and and it's just like really 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 beautiful stuff and they had relationships with a lot of the artists that they collected um and and i was told that that mr cargo learned how to make quilts so that he could sort of understand you know what he was collecting or, or you know he, he he wanted to learn and i thought that was really cool and i but i had never seen a quilt in a book that he worked on, but he did this. He did the quilting here. Isn't that great? Okay, let's read about it. What does it say? The Thomas Family Quilt. Top made by Rosie Morgan uh, of Cullum, Alabama, quilted by Robert Cargo, 1982. Uh, quilted in 1981, so the top was made in 1982, quilted in 1981. Um, yeah, courtesy of the Robert Cargo Folk Art Gallery. So it says, in 1982, in a fabric store in Coleman. Okay, so this is quoting Robert Cargo from the top. Robert Cargo says, in quote, 1982, in a fabric store in Coleman, Alabama, I saw on display a quilt that had been made by Rosie Morgan, a clerk in the shop. It depicted a church in the Coleman area. And at once I thought of the possibility uh, at once, I thought of the possibility of having the maker do a quilt based on the Thomas family photograph showing my great-grandmother, 
my grandparents and other relatives standing in front of their quilt-draped porch in 1899. Uh, the photograph offers an intimate glimpse into the unadorned and simple life of a pioneer family in remote Alabama at the very end of the 19th century, as well as being a remarkable, if not unique, piece of documentation of 19th century quilts and persons. Mrs. Morgan agreed to make my top. My mother, Mildred Thomas Cargo, embroidered the faces on the various figures. Oh, that's cool. The top remained unquilted until 1991 when I quilted it. Except for a few church pieces, it is the only picture Rosie Morgan, an accomplished quilt maker, has made. Oh, I like how he talked about that. Did you catch that? Did you catch what he had to say? Except for a few church pieces, it is the only picture quilt. Okay, Rosie Morgan, an accomplished quilt maker, has made. Okay. I thought he said the only picture. Anyway, yeah, still really cool. That, you know what, this quilting kind of looks like the Fransoika stuff. You know, that echo quilting. And he did, this is called a Baptist fan. Some of you know that well, but that's, that's, at least it's one of the names for this motif is a Baptist, Baptist fan motif. Um, was there a little banjo? There was a little banjo. I didn't see it. Let's get that banjo up here. Yeah, a little banjo. One of the little people has a banjo. <laughs> yeah, that's, this is really cool. I like that a lot. Um, and there's also so many good quilts in here. It was hard to know, hard to know what to choose and what to save for later. Of course, you know, the show will be on a long time with your continued support and viewership. So I can show you all of the book over time if you want. Um, let's see this one. Yeah, this is great. This is really great. Faces. Faces. Sophia Serena Schroeder. I've never heard of this person before. Fort Wayne, Indiana. This, oh my God, this was made in 1950. Oh, I had no idea. I had no idea when I looked at this quilt and I was like, yes, this, this editor is picking this quilt for this show. I didn't know it was made in 1950. What? Oh, I love quilts so much. I'm not sure what to make of this one, Mary. It, look, it's, it's strange and I, I think I would imagine that this quilt, if it was a painting, like if it was, because it, it looks a little bit like, not Ed Paschke, but I mean, there's a little, there's a Faith Ringgold kind of thing to it, just in terms of it's like, you know, face forward figures looking at you. Um, it's not, what am I thinking of? I mean, it is very, I mean, outsider, I guess you can say, you know, that term is kind of weird, you know, sometimes, but I mean, it's, it's, I don't know. It's that it's so fabulous. I think it's so great. I think it's so great. Hey, Ivy, thanks for liking the stream. Um, I, I think this is, I think it's, I think it's magnificent. I, I, I mean, I feel like this, it could be hanging this, this, here's what, I, sorry. Like first dibs is this auction site. You know, we've looked at quilts that are available on first dibs. I feel like if this quilt, were available on first dibs, it would be, well, if it was a quilt, it'd be worth less. If it was a painting or like some kind of enamel thing, it'd be like $50,000. Seriously. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and I'm not trying to put anything on the no. quilt maker, but no, no. <laughs> I'm trying to think. So, um, there have been those different projects where they look at the images that people make when they're in mental institutions. Oh, <laughs> Lord. The yeah. hospital. And they say that, like, <laughs> I remember seeing one, and I'm trying to think, was it a, was it a quilt? It had to have been a quilt or some yeah. type of textile art. And I feel like I looked at it and thought, oh, how creative, how neat. And they were like, all of these images are a sign of, you know, what was oh. broken in this woman's brain. Oh, and no. So I'm looking at this thinking, is this is either really brilliant yeah. Or this is the sign of somebody like disturbed <laughs> on the edge. <laughs> yeah, I mean there's there's the, you know the clowns whenever you have a lot of clowns, you know, yeah, it's a well, little Well, and it's unfair to put our our current day, you it's know, true. the zeitgeist of clown hatred on it's people true. in the past. It's people true. liked clowns. It's true. It's true. 
That is true. This and is, this is just a very strange. It is, you know. Of it, yeah, yeah. Hope loves it. Thank God. I'm so glad. Um, Mother Nature is like, yeah, I'm not so sure. It's yeah. This is weird. You know, I don't know what that's. I mean, you know, these depictions. Yeah, can I mean, be... product of its times, and I thought it's any excuse. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, it. it this is. Know. This is a little bit. I mean, you know, it's like. I don't know, like this this depiction makes me feel better about this kind of cartoonish thing down here, just because there seems to be some, you know, respect paid to people's faces. And I mean, you've got your sailors here, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, it's not just all caricature, it seems like. Like th this, 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 this part of this quilt does not feel like it's um, a caricature. It feels like it's a, it's an illustration, like an act, yeah, you know? Yeah, I almost feel like they traced things. Yeah. Things that they liked, things that they wanted to display. They traced them out of magazines yeah. and maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, that one portrait there, I mean, this that's clearly kind of like a, yeah. an engraving portrait that they traced. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this, to me, this look has like they're nobility. probably from a fashion magazine or something. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah, it's. I think there's really something to it. And uh, look, is that Amelia Earhart? It is Amelia Earhart. Wow. And yeah. like that, the style of that is almost like they found something that was printed like that. Mm -hmm. Even though that looks mm -hmm. like thread painting. Really this this confuses me so much. It's same, oh. same. And all we have about it, well, it was courtesy of Shelley Ziegert. So she, you know, she's a major collector. Oh. And AQSG in Louisville is that's this the next seminar location is Louisville, Kentucky. And I happen to know, isn't Babe? Babe, aren't you around that? Um, I think you're around that area. Um, Shelly Ziegert will be at seminar. I think she's going to be presenting. I mean, this is like a major. I mean, she owned this quilt, right? Major figure in the quilt culture of as we know it. Um, yeah, she she sold a lot of her collection to the Art Institute. And I asked her about Bertha Max Ross, but she didn't know anything. But anyway, I mean, she didn't have any more information. So, so the book says this. Um, the embroidered faces are likenesses of well-known personalities of the 1940s and 50s, including General Douglas MacArthur. Okay. Joan Crawford. Wow. And you thought, and you thought it was scary before. Uh, Betty Davis, or yeah, Betty Davis, Amelia Earhart, Roy Rogers, Dale Evans, Imelda Marcos, President... Sukarno and Leopold Stokowski. The artist sewed a pink sunbonnet to represent herself adorned with her initials SS. I wondered what this was. That's the that's the maker. Pretty wild. Interesting. Look, screen printed. She did, Panama. She did. Okay. What else have we got here? A couple more treats. A couple more treats for you. Oh yeah. This. You're going to love this. This is early Paula Nadelstern. I think it's, I mean, I think it's early. This is 1991. Cake, will you, would you Google Paula Nadelstern's, like, maybe her first book or something? I'm sure she's had several books. But, I mean, Paula Nadelstern, you, you all surely know, you can think of her work, right? She's very, very accomplished. I'm oh, sorry, very famous uh, quilt maker with a high profile and a long, illustrious career. She's really neat. She makes all her quilts on uh, on the floor. She lays out her quilts on the floor uh, of her apartment in New York City. And she's a good friend of my mom's. They've been friends a long time. But she makes these mandalas, these uh, brilliant, brilliant works. Did you did you find some of that? Sorry, I completely threw that out at you. Um, I think this might be, I mean, this is definitely her. I think this might be the earliest thing. It is actually a Dover Needlework series book. And it's color design and patchwork with plastic templates for 10 pairs of blocks. Ah, interesting. Cool. Um, it, and you can, I think if you look at Google Books, find it on Google Books, you can see a big chunk. Well, yeah, a big chunk of it. And I think probably the, I'm going to put this. So when I Google her, I just did this on the fly. And her her website i just put a link to the gallery of her quilts when you look at that you'll probably recognize her work but she 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 makes um just i mean the, I, to say they're complicated is like well yeah but they're they're so intricate and they're these mandalas and these interlocking they're they're kaleidoscopes they look like these quilts look like you're looking into a kaleidoscope and 
they are exquisite and she's won all of the awards and she's just done incredible things and she has this amazing career and um and this is a quilt I've never seen by her and and to me it's very different from other quilts that I've seen by her um in fact so th this quilt is called hold on, it's called kaleidoscopic eight so vii kaleidoscopic eight the sun the moon and the stars and Paula Nadelstern says, quote, I am intrigued by the structure of fabricated kaleidoscopes, by the mechanical skill involved in the intricate piecework combined with the challenge of finding the relationships between fabrics. Look how she did this moon. I mean, that is wild. It's so cool. Oh my God, it reminds me of the Corona too, you know? Um, I try to free myself from a conventional sense of fabric orderliness and seek a random quality to imitate the succession of chance interlinkings synonymous with kaleidoscopes. Depending on the placement of color and the resulting degree of contrast, different shapes are emphasized and visually linked. Um, the symmetrical repetition of the design inherent in kaleidoscopic configuration creates a visual pattern of in inferred lines. Some patches connect to their mirror images and act as if reflected um, so that a plethora of new symmetrical patterns are created and the whole becomes greater than its parts. I have made eight quilts in the kaleidoscope series. Already numbers nine and ten are twinkles in this maker's eye. Oh, that's so great. So from 1991, yeah. when she released, she worked with Dover, and it's it looks they look like patterns for very traditional basic blocks. Mm. Five within five years, she's doing kaleidoscopes and quilts, mm. cool. and that's her next book, as far as I can tell, 1996. Hmm. Hmm. Like she maybe found her mm -hmm. niche there, like between those yeah. early 90s. And, and I love that. So yeah, that's exactly, yeah, that's right. She's right in there discovering this. Um, yeah, this was number eight, right? Yeah. She, um, I like that this, this is in this book of pictorial quilts because a lot of them are figurative, you know, I mean, there's like figures, you know, dancing and, and doing different things. And, you know, the Nora Ezel quilt had buildings on it and all that, but this is abstract, but it's still pictorial. And this is a really good example of that, you know, that question we were sort of considering, what is a pictorial quilt? Is every, I mean, is, yeah, we won't get into it, but I mean, this, I actually need to write this down because that topic is very interesting to me. Like what is, what is, what counts as pictorial? Uh, this is, this is in this book. It's pretty interesting. Okay. Um, all right, all right, this, this one is really so good. Okay, oh yeah, 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 look at this one, look at this one. I don't know why I'm whispering. Oh, this is our moment of zen tonight. How about that? Babe, I feel like you're gonna like this one. I mean, mm, mandalas are a process. I love what you said up, up top. Mm, yes. Um, the, yeah, this is nice, isn't it? Hey, Lisa, yeah. I mean, it's just, you can really just sink into this. And I'm going to leave the full thing up for a second, just because that perspective is so important, right? The vanishing point is so important to this. Um, and you know what this yeah. reminds me of, Mary? Tell me, tell me. I I want to tell you before you start reading about yeah. it. Yeah, I'm sure everybody, a lot of people are going to recognize this. There are those uh, those posters that the National, I don't know if the National Park Service released them or if they worked with somebody, but yeah. they're those very graphic posters for the National Parks that look oh. like this. So like, I don't know, whatever pass at Zion, mm -hmm. you know, like this would represent it. And I could see them being like that graphic designer being you know, really inspired by this. Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't know when when this is from, but hang on, keep keep, keep talking actually, because I gotta look something up. I'm looking something up really quick. Um, yeah, it actually, come to think of it, those um, those very graphic pictures of the national parks. Yeah. I want to say there's some fabric some fabric line released those. Oh, that's cool. There's like a pan a panel of them, yeah. And that's I mean, this reminds me of that so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, WPA project. Uh, ah. could be. Maybe. Ah. Oh, cool. That's cool. Yeah, um, whatever, whatever, you know, whenever somebody does a landscape in these, like, abstract 
lines and sort of makes it, yeah, I, I just love it. I love it. It's so beautiful. And I really love the mountains. I do love the mountains. So here's what we have to say about this, this moment of Zen. This was made by Carol Johnson of Nibley, Utah. Okay, makes sense. Um, cotton, metallic fabric, and synthetics. And I will zoom in once right here because you see the synthetics, the, the sort of the shimmer, right? And this was made in 1990. So that kind of fabric was definitely, like I think of that kind of shiny synthetic, you know, not polyester, but you know that sheen? That, that's kind of an 80s, and especially in that color, it makes me think of like the 1980s art quilts. But you know, yeah, 1990, it's that kind of time period. Um, oh, oh, it's so good even when it's cropped, right? Like cropped like that. I mean, it's just every every inch of it makes total sense, right? No matter what, um, whether you're looking at it really closely like this or at the whole piece. So here's what uh, we have here from Carol Johnson. Uh, and it's called Joy in the Journey. I don't think I said that. Joy in the Journey, 1990 by Carol Johnson. She says, Joy in the Journey is the third work in a series of three quilts I have made from pictures I took of the Grand, of Grand Canyon, or the Grand Canyon. I wanted to depict the feelings I had experienced when rafting in this part of Grand Canyon, sur surrounded by massive green rock and green, deep green water. Each bend in the river brought, a, brought different colored rock and water. When we would ask the head boatman what was next, he would say, have joy in the journey. Thus the title was born. Oh. The scripture from the Mormon Doctrine and Covenants 128.23 says, Let the mountains shout for joy, and all ye valleys cry aloud, and ye, and ye seas and dry lands tell the wonder of your eternal king. And ye rivers and brooks and rills flow down with gladness. This also mirrors my feelings about this awesome part of nature, says Carol Johnson. I am concerned about the conservation of our natural resources what? Uh, and preservation of the integrity of Grand Canyon National Park. Joy in the Journey turned out to be a personal favorite of mine because it captures a scene of peaceful serenity and reflects my love of the outdoors. The quilt is machine pieced, employing various strip piece techniques. It is hand and machine quilted. When the work was finished, it seemed to say, frame me. So it is, so it is in a simple silver frame rather than traditional binding. Wow, how about that? And I see down here, and we're able to look at it and pull it over and leave it right in the center of the screen without touching it because of my new program, Carol Johnson, 1990. She signed it, signed it on the front. It's good. It's good. Signed it on the front and it's in a frame. This is really so nice. Car so Carol may have been inspired by those posters. Yeah, that, yeah, that's possible. It is possible. It's really good. It's, it's so good. I just love it so much. Sometimes you just see a piece and you're like, well... You did, did you say how big it was? I don't think that I did. It is uh, 44 and a quarter by 52 and a quarter. Oh, not small, you know, not, not tiny. Very cool. All right, this one, what I looked up when I told Cake to <laughs> keep talking, keep talking, um, was this, because I was so tickled. This was another discovery. I've got just a couple more for you tonight. There's so many good ones in this. I do, I do think. Hey, Janet. Thanks for coming by. Um, I do think that you should get this book. I do think that you should get it. Any pictorial quilt book. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them I really like. So, but this one's really good. So, okay. So this one, where did it go? Hang on. It's worth the wait. Trust me. I'm down. It's really good too. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I think I keep looking further back and it's not that far back. So I saw, I found a quilt by somebody that I have only seen one quilt. I've only seen one quilt by made by this person in any book that I've looked at. Obviously I've not looked at all the books. That's why this is so much fun. But, um, oh, the Joe Diggs one. Okay, we'll close with Joe Diggs. I almost forgot about her, oh God. Um, here we go, here we go. 
page 62. Okay, page 62. Okay, this quilt. So some of you will notice, will recognize instantly, uh, the Keith Herring. The Keith Herring motifs down there, right? And I saw that and I was like, that's really neat, cool, who made this? And because it's so New York, it's so New York, Keith Herring's so New York. And then I saw this tile kind of stuff. I'm gonna go to the full quilt so you can see the full effect, okay? And I, I knew, I knew where I had seen this kind of quilt before. And I pulled it up for you and you're gonna just, you're just gonna be delighted. I don't, I get a lot of things wrong, but I, I don't have a photographic memory, but it's close sometimes visually. I can't remember things that are not pictures, but I mean, I knew what I was looking at. And I was looking at this. Okay, yeah, yeah, I've got it right here. Let me just pull it up. I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna go, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're just gonna go, oh, that's what you're gonna do, oh. This quilt is also by the same person. Do you remember this quilt? I think that it was an intro quilt. You remember Steph, remember? She's like, yeah, yeah. Yvonne Foreman made this quilt. And, and the, um, the picture is showing this, don't worry about that checkerboard around the edge. It's just because it's a PNG file. I don't know why it's really doing that, but but this 42nd Street quilt. So so the quilt ends in the gray. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say is that the the total the total pick quilt is what you're seeing there, um, and it's called 42nd Street by Yvonne Foreman, and it was made in 1986, and it's in the big the big book, the Robert Shaw, the big book, the really big one. He's got a couple big ones, but anyway, but this is 42nd Street, and it's the New York subway. And I'm like, oh my God, I know where I've seen this person's work before. And look, it's another subway. So it's called Canal Street. Canal Street. Don't you want to know more about her? Don't you want to look at newspapers.com? Don't you want to go and try to find out who this person is, especially if you live in New York? And don't you want to know what all of her subway quilt series was like? Yeah, yeah. Do you have to do other things that actually earn you money? Yeah, you do, you do. But you can take a little time, can't you? <laughs> She's so interesting. You know what? If you find her, somebody, send this, send a clip to her and tell her we really like her. Here's what she has to say about this. Um, we're gonna learn a lot. Okay, in 1904, August Belmont, financier of New York City's first subway line, cool, conceived of and funded the beautiful terracotta mosaic tiles and base reliefs that are mounted on the walls of many of the system's subway stations. His intention was that these decorative motifs serve to both beautify and uh, so serve both to beautify the subterranean environment as well as to help orient many illiterate immigrants as to their whereabouts. Didn't know. Didn't know. Eight decades later, these many-hued, hand-cut ceramics, jeopardized by dirt, disre disrepair, and the harsh environment of an overstressed system, have become the inspiration for a series I have entitled Quilts from the New York Subways. Woohoo! These quilts satisfy my desire not only to testify to the beauty of these tiny endangered voices, tiny endangered voices, love it, but to preserve this beauty for, for a wider public. I feel like suit. Susan R. Michael, are you watching this? I feel like this is your jam. I don't know. And then she also says, oh, are you ready for this? Guided by my Mennonite upbringing, the translation of these designs into traditional quilting materials, look at this one, and techniques was a natural one for me. The techniques used in the tie, used in ties, the techniques used in the ties moved easily from hard to soft. Oh, okay. Oh, the geometric mosaic designs to patchwork, the hand cut picture mosaics to applique, and the base relief to trapunto. The challenge has been to convert these beloved landmarks from ceramic to fiber without compromising the integrity of either the mosaics or the traditional quilt. Um, huge fan. Was a fan before, super fan now. What a fascinating project. 
and what a great execution of it. I love her. I mean, what series would you make, you know? Like, the, the, this is such a great idea, the subway, you know, in her, in her environment. It's really cool. It's really cool. To, oh, wait, hold on, sorry. It's really cool. Oh, 60. And Keith Haring, perfect. What do you think about those? They're neat, right? Mm-hmm. Keith Haring, Amy saw it. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if she used bias tape. <laughs> bias tape, yeah, yeah, maybe so. It's really, um, I mean, she just, she got it. I wonder what her background is. I mean, yeah, it, do, it doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't matter, she, she got it right. Okay, y'all, so I'm gonna do one more quilt tonight. Joe Diggs, uh, I'm glad I, remembered that because it's I teased you with it before um, let's look at that and talk about a moment of Zen it'll 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 get you there um, thank you for coming tonight and being part of this crack up okay oh I know what I did I know what I did I know what my problem is sorry I think it's that I've Oh, look at all these wonderful quilts. Oh, yeah. Okay, here it is. Joe Diggs. So do you remember? Some of you will remember those. Um, well, I did a series. I did a, um, a segment on Joe Diggs. I think we did it for the Sunday Social, and then I did do it for the show. I think we watched a video. So it's J-O, Joe Diggs, D-I-G-G-S. And uh, <laughs> I mean, oh, my God. I mean, are, are you sitting down? Let me just zoom in on this a little bit. makes me think of snow that scene in snow white where she's standing out there and she stretches her arms out yeah. and the bunnies come by and there's the little bluebird lands on her wrist yes. oh, <laughs> oh the little skunks the, the little, little skunks. skunks and the leopard wow look at the sky the purple sky oh it's a horse it's a horsey um so eric look at the, oh, the unicorn oh my god i mean with the purple sky if Ivy could Ivy's still out there, the unicorn, the 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 flying ponies and things, we, we had a conversation about that. Anyway, um, yeah, I love this. And I think Joe Diggs was just the master of, I mean, pictorial. <laughs> like, I mean, just the layering. Look at that. Look how she, oh my God, with the clouds and the trees. She The way she layered the fabric. I mean, it's really a collage, you could say. It's a collage, but it's more than that because then she's quilting it, right? It's fast. Eden. Oh, Penny Catherine. Hi, Penny Catherine. Yeah, it is e Edenic. Edenic? It is like Eden. It is. Um, so, you know, uh, oh, and there's an owl. There's so many surprises in this quilt. Oh, and an iguana. Look at him. Um, Eric reads to me at night. He reads to me um, so I can fall asleep. And he found like uh, bedtime stories for adults, <laughs> like Neil Gaiman, you know, has wrote this incredible poem. And so he's, there's these wonderful, I'll try to find, I'll, I mean, I'll ask him what the book is, but um, but this is so interesting that this is here because some of the, I mean, the, their bedtime stories retold, you know, from children's stories for adults, like Jack and the Beanstalk. They're amazing. The writers are so wonderful. So it's cool to see this because I've been thinking about fairy tales and things. So let's see what Joe Diggs has to say about this book and then I will let you go into the world and be the people that you are. Okay, this is called Alpha Bestiary. Alpha Bestiary. And I'm just going to keep scrolling around it because there's so many wonderful things to see in it while I read about it. Okay, let's start at the top. I'll start at the top and go slowly. Okay, great. Do you see that crow? Yeah, yeah. Joe Diggs made this. And there same, are letters. Yeah. I'm sorry. There yeah, are yeah. letters in there. I thought I saw one that looked like a C, and I was like, oh, no, that's just a branch. That's mm. a J. Mm-hmm. 
Right, that is a J. Right. No, no. Oh, I see it now. And is that a K up above my head? That's a K, right? There's letters. Oh, and there's a koala. Oh, there's letters on me. Is there a letter for each animal? I think that's a B. Look, there's a B hiding with the bluebird. Oh my God, that's so great. For Jackdaw? Oh Lord. Okay. Well, she's, I mean, come on. Come on. It was so cool before. All right. Let's, let's, let's take it in. I might actually, zooming out might help us see the letters. Mm -hmm. There's the O for the owl. Let me uh, hide the chat so we can really get the, the full thing. Okay. God, it's gorgeous. I can't stand it. It's so beautiful. Oh my God. Um, 120 by 96 inches, by the way. Cotton, cotton blends, and synthetic fabrics. Photo by Jay York. Jay York, by the way, gets credit because this is a very good photograph of this quilt. Okay. Joe Diggs says of Alpha Bestiary. In a competition of the Percent for Arts project for the Pride's Corner School in Westbrook, Maine, I was chosen to create the Alpha Bestiary quilt to decorate a new addition to the building. The quilt shows a deep, dark forest, opening out to great light vistas, suggesting expanding horizons through learning. I'm gonna cry, I swear to God. In the forest are all the letters of the alphabet. I am gonna cry. <clears throat> with animals whose names start with matching letters. Some of these animals and letters are fairly hard to find, presenting a challenge for the children. In designing the quilt, I remembered how much fun I had as a child trying to find hidden animals or objects and puzzles of various children's, in various children's magazines. Alpha Bestiary represented a big sale, an excuse to buy new fabrics and use up some old ones. The joy of meeting the staff and children uh, of a really special school, the hard but enjoyable labor of stitching for two months, and the final pleasure of the presentation day. The quilt became part of the educational process of the school. <sighs> a video showing me working on the quilt helped the children learn about quilts and quilting. I visited the school and talked to all the classes about the history of quilts and their care. Alpha Bestiary hangs open to all, <clears throat> no glass inside the main entry hall. The quilt was appliqued by hand with minimal hand quilting, uh, composed of long diagonal lines. It was designed on a wall, but stitched on a table after I finished the layout. It is worked from center out in all directions, one layer at a time. When the top layer was finished, I cut away underlapped areas to prevent the quilt from becoming too bulky or heavy. Oh, my great cat says, did anyone find X? We got to find X. Um, N for Newt, Newt, S by the skunks. Which B starts with X? You near the unicorn, oh yeah, yeah, there she is. What B starts with X? You know what's awesome is that like that is the question that like so many children have asked too like where's the x where the, where's the x Ooh, that's a piranha i think the p what beast starts with x oh is that a little mouse it is look at the little mouses <gasps> the little mouse what's the animal with a it looks like a panda but it does look like a panda what's that panda doing isn't that the A? It is an A. It's like an alpine panda or something. This is, it's hard. So, so that's why you got to get this book. You got to get this book. The photograph is incredible. It's very good. It's very good. And in this book is really good because the photographs are good, but there's a good photograph and then there's a really good photograph. And this photograph is dynamite um the panda's a red herring it's possible that it is yes look at this look at this just this flora or fauna i mean 
She was so good. And the plaid. I love how art quilters, when they're really, when I like, like Ruth McDowell, you know, she can use any stripe, any plaid, any polka dot, any print and mix it with something. I mean, look at this, look at this, this crazy fabric here, you know? I mean, it's just perfect. It's perfect. Oh my God. And look at that. The leaves, she used that stripe, that like ombre stripe. Oh my God. You know, I don't know how to do this kind of thing. I mean, even attempt it. It would be cool to take a class like from somebody like Joe Diggs, right? Who's like, look, do you have a stripe? Here's how you can make it look like a tree. You know, like I, I, I that would be extremely cool to, to, to learn that stuff. I mean, just to understand where to begin. Cause this is, really fun isn't yeah it? I don't think it's Joe Diggs but it's an it was another quilter who whose work is very heavily layered like this mm -hmm. and I saw her process in a video and I was like I just it bewildered me because she she had this like plan for it but you couldn't see it until she started putting it down and it was just amazing to me yeah. and I wonder if how I wonder how Joe Diggs works on these things she yeah well she I think in the video I played I think there's some videos on YouTube but I think she passed away like I don't know. I don't. I don't remember. It's been you know ten years probably. But, but oh, has it been that long? Yeah, I think. So. I think. Well, no, maybe not. Maybe I remember my mom was really sad to hear it. And I, maybe it hasn't been that long. But but she she did show in her in the video, um, you know, how she was designing things and layering things and really really cool woman. Um, yeah. So thank you for coming to the show tonight. What a what a. I mean, what, what fun to be with you. Um, so if you enjoyed the show, then I hope that you'll con consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. If you like this kind of content, you know, it's uh, then that's, that's a great way to make sure it exists, right? And, and, and telling somebody about it is good too. And we're doing our part as best we can to get the word out, but I don't know how to... I don't know how to do anything except make the show and I love to make show. Okay, so uh, thanks everybody and thank you to Cake and yeah i think i think that's all i have to say I, uh, in september remember in september there was like a deal on subscriptions and stuff i was thinking to myself i was like oh yeah you know a lot of people signed up for like a six month thing because it was like you got like a discount so if you're one of those people um i hope that you'll make sure that your subscription continues because you've just been enjoying being a subscriber to the show so much you can't possibly let it stop so um check that out and uh and thanks Thanks, y'all, very much. We'll see you around. We'll see you on Saturday, and we'll do some more First Quilt stuff. Okay, thanks for coming. Bye. Merry Christmas, baby. Reindeer's coming out to play. Santa Claus is packing the presents, making sure you've been behaving okay. Merry Christmas, honey. Yeah. The snowman's dusting off his hat. On the show for everybody to give them a smile that lasts another year. There's something that happens for sleigh. There's a ring in December ends when the children are singing. Yeah. Merry Christmas, baby. Christmas, baby. The snow is laying two feet deep. Now wish upon a falling star so all your secret dreams can come true. There's something that happens when sleigh there's a
I didn't know. 